we're going to start with the magistrate candidates from the third district. And Joe, you are the first one to answer this question. And the question is, as magistrate, you will vote on issues that affect all of Ohio County. How do you plan to balance the needs of your district with the needs of the county as a whole? That is a really good question. I think the, uh, the, the best way to, to balance that is staying involved in the county affairs. Not just going to the citizens that's in my district, but going to events throughout the county, going to the fire departments throughout the county, the cities in the, in the county, and staying in touch with the way the majority of the citizens in our county feel on these issues. Uh, that's the only way you can be fair to the whole county and your district at the same time. Uh, I know sometimes there, there may be the conflicts in the district and the county, but that's just, that is the only way you're going to be able to, to make a decision on that is by being involved and taking time to listen to everybody that you can and, and learn as much as you can at these events. But that's a... Uh, that would that is a tough that is a tough subject there. Bingley. I'll leave it to Jason. <laughs> Yo, I wish I could take this thing out of the mic. I can't buck up down that low. Uh, Joe had some good points. You know, we're all we're all going to represent a certain district as a magistrate, but you know, ultimately we make decisions for the whole county. Uh, you know, even though we're one sixth, I guess it would be of, of the of the what happens. You know, you've got five magistrates and a judge, so you'll be one sixth of that vote. Uh, you need to be involved with what's going on. If something's going on at Horse Branch and it's going to benefit the county, I'm for it 100 percent. I might have to get out and jump in my truck, go to Horse Branch, and talk to the magistrate there. Or, uh, talk to some people there, if, you know, if that's not an issue, and and see what's going on. Because I do want ultimately what's best for the county. You you know you want what's best for your district. That's a, kind of a no-brainer. Uh, but you also you know I have nothing against anything coming to Fordsville, to Cromwell, to any any other town in my Fordsville. I, I think I already said that, but uh, you, you get my my drift. Um, you know I have nothing nothing against that at all because uh, there, there may be something that Centertown needs or wants that will benefit Centertown and you know it's a give and take thing and uh, you know if something's going to help Beaver down then I'm all for it uh, you know so uh, you've got to you've got to you know and that's a lot of work I know you're saying well you're running for master you must think you have time for all that working a full-time job and, and doing all it, it takes a lot of time. This campaign is about to just drive me nuts. <laughs> I'll be glad when it's over. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'll be glad when it's over. Uh, okay, thank you. But like I said, you just got to be involved. Uh, I've met a lot of people on this. Uh, you know, I, I may get beat so bad I wish I'd never stood up here and talked, but it's been an experience, and, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, you know, I've met a lot of people and a lot of good people and have a lot of different ideas for this county. So you gotta listen to that. No matter if it's Center Town, Fordsville, Horse Branch, or where it's at. Thank you. Okay, Jason, you go first this time. And I'm, I'm you again. It's with you, man. You can be looking at my questions now. Well, it's the same question, isn't it? Yeah, but I just wanted to make sure that you don't see my other ones. I'm saying what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, come on, all right, good question. Huh? You get three more. Well, this is your, you get this one and then two more. Okay. All right, so I'm going to state this question again just to make sure that we're clear on what the question is. As magistrate, you will vote on issues that affect all of Ohio County. How do you plan to balance the needs of your district with those of the county as a whole? Well, like we said earlier, we uh, we all work for Ohio County. I represent the second district, and the best way to do that is is um, it goes back to those relationships, uh, having good relationships with the other magistrates. Finding, you know, I get on the phone, for example, with the Chief Forceful, since you mentioned that, 
If I know what Larry needs and we have that relationship, we can work together. And if we work together and Wardsville gets it, he's going to work with me. It's about working together. And the main thing is, is, is it good for Ohio County? And if it's good for Ohio County, it's good for all of us because when we bring an industry in Beaver Dam or we bring something to Wardsville and it brings jobs or it brings, that's money coming in that we're going to use on roads that goes to the 5th, 4th, 3rd, 1st, 2nd district. So anytime we can work together to bring something in, we need to. Okay, but it goes back to those working relationships. Knowing your people, knowing your magistrates, getting together, putting your heads together, and what's best for Ohio County. I represent Beaverdown. I want for Beaverdown. I'll be the first one to tell you. If I can get something, I want. But it's me against five other ones. So the best way for me to represent Beaverdown is to work with the other ones. Because if I isolate myself, I'm going to hurt Beaver now. So, you know, I'm working for that. And I want the best for Beaver now, but I also want the best for Ohio County. I want the best for every resident here. But it goes back to working relationships and listening to everybody else. Thank you. Well, I've been working for Beaver Dam also. I've been to quite a few of the court meetings, and I see that these guys have to work together to get anything done in the county. It's a give and take situation. But for, foremost, as I said, I want to be elected to run, I mean, for a uh, magistrate in the second district, and then I want to work for the county as a whole. Being retired, I feel like that uh, I can devote more time listening and going to different places in the county uh, than somebody that works a full-time job. But it is a give-and-take situation uh, to get something done. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we're back to the judge executives again. And you've heard a lot of talk about working together. You've heard that. So now then, you guys will have an opportunity to tell us a little bit about that. Brandon, you're going to be first. And the question is, how do you plan to establish and maintain a cooperative relationship with magistrates in order to move Ohio County forward? Well, first of all, in any relationship, no matter what organization it is, you have to be truthful and honest and inform your other magistrates and keep them informed. And from that, not only informing them of what you know, but you have to be receptive to what they know and what their wishes and needs are. Now, we do have a uh, discretionary fund that's been set up, so that takes some of the ease out of everything that does not have to be voted on. Uh, we each have our own somewhat uh, discretionary funds to where we can spend some money on it. I think that is a good thing, so that uh, whatever may be important in the second district, he can do that without the permission of all the other magistrates. So, the most importantly is just to be, uh, to be, to be including all that's involved and not leaving any of the members out, but to include all of them and always be welcome to listen to, to their advice and to their opinions as well. Thank you. Yeah, I do believe that uh, what you've got to do, you've got to listen to uh, everybody. Uh, this this county is so diverse that uh, there's nothing wrong that you don't agree all the time. Because what's important in the rural communities is not as important as what's in the uh, uh, urban areas. And uh, with, that, with that said, there's gonna be differences of opinions. And you've got to, to weigh that out. Um, and even in the rural communities, what's important, important in the four districts, not necessarily what's important in the third. Um, with, with, and so that's it. We just all got to work together all the time. And uh, the main thing is to uh, cooperate. As judge executive, uh, the, the magistrates that's got something in their district that they want to get done, we bring it to the judge executive to, uh, uh, to help them make it happen. And it's always my desire to make whatever they bring happen, if we can at all. Um, I don't think that anything's ever been brought to me that uh, that I thought was so bad that we wouldn't try to make it happen. And you hate to make choices about what you're going to do and what you can't do. 
after sometimes those choices had to be made. But with that said, uh, I, I, I believe in working with all the magistrates and just getting along. And as uh, some of them said earlier, uh, once the one issue's over, let's get that behind us and we'll move on to the next. Thank you. Now for the sheriff's office. And Tracy, you will get to go first. And this question is, having open communication with the public has been an issue in the race for sheriff. How will you assure Ohio County citizens have access to their sheriff? Thank you. <clears throat> I'm just gonna hold that. <clears throat> I, I believe that the, uh, that the public needs to be informed, that's for sure. Um, I will continue to update the public through social media. Um, again, I said that I would develop an arrest app for smartphones. Uh, this can be used for anonymous tips, uh, weather updates, road closings, uh, in those community coalition meetings that I talked about. We plan on setting those meetings up and then sending that out through the app that we will have developed for your smartphone. Um, I will also keep the local media uh, updated on all the happenings in the sheriff's office. I think also with our scanners being opened up on the the day-to-day -day operations for the sheriff's office, I think that you can keep in touch with what my office is doing and you can actually hear what we're doing, not to mention the tips that you can call in to us. Those narcotics drug operations will be held on an encrypted channel. They won't be put out in anything that can be heard. Uh, also, some of the more private things, uh, if we have suicides, uh, murders, things of that nature, they will be kept on an encrypted channel. So I, I would certainly uh, keep the media informed. I would keep any type of uh, communication I would have with uh, the radio or the newspaper or television stations, anything that I could, I would keep open to the public. Thank you. Well, I don't think that folks think that that's been a problem in uh, my term here. Matter of fact, uh, it's almost to a fault. Well, I've heard people say we were always in the newspaper. Well, I believe that it's our job and our obligation to make sure that the people that I serve know exactly what their sheriff office is doing and know what's happening in their county. And so it's very important to do those things. We also started a Facebook page, which we now have close to 5,100 followers. And that hasn't been up, but maybe a little close to two years. So that's, that's pretty amazing to have that many followers. And we have that up-to-date information as soon as we can get it on there where we feel that you need to hear. I certainly disagree with the scanner. Uh, you can't just turn off and on the switch when you have a suicide or when you have a drug deal. You can't just turn off the radio and go to an uh, encrypted channel through dispatch. Uh, that's certainly not going it shouldn't happen when most of the country is trying to get away from scanners. We updated our system, and that's why those scanners don't work to digital. My opponent is talking about going back to analog. That's going back 20, 20 years. We can't do that. And I, as a sheriff, it is my job to protect you from being victims. And that scanner, when you're hearing that information, your social security numbers, your date of birth, your, your names, coming across having medical issues and that type of stuff, it just certainly can't be. And so uh, I have given my phone number, people call my phone number, 270-363-3841. I don't have a work phone and a personal phone. So uh, there has not been an issue that I feel, uh, just look at the calls for service that we get and the direct risk that we make. So thank you very much. 